How good is that aha moment? You know the one that students experience when they really understand something? Well, this activity has a 100% strike rate of achieving just that. In fact, maybe you might experience your own aha moment yourself. Hang around after the intro and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, my name's Tom Moore. Now we all know that the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. But sometimes for students, seeing is believing. And by seeing something, they can actually attach new things that they're learning to something that they already know and understand. I've talked about this in previous videos. Now in this video, we're going to demonstrate how to do just that using the interior angles of a triangle so that they can actually understand that they all add up to 180 degrees. So let's get started. In this activity, we're going to need to use some paper, a pen, some scissors, and also a ruler. Oh, there you go. It's one of our rulers donated by one of our fantastic partner schools. Thank you very much, Redcliffe State High School. Now, in order to do this, we're going to draw out a large size triangle. You can do any type of triangle you like. I'm going to draw a large scalene triangle, but also an acute angled triangle as well. That is, it's got three different side lengths and also all of my interior angles of the triangle are acute. You could do a right angled triangle, you could do an obtuse angled triangle, it doesn't matter because it will always work. Now, from here, what you need to do is mark in the angles. Now make sure that you make these angles large and the reason why will become clear to you in a few moments. So from here, you need to go through and cut out this triangle. We'll do that now. So there we go, we've got our triangle cut out now. And what we need to do is just remove everything else that we don't need anymore. And we're now going to cut out each of the angles. This is why it needs to be large because we're going to be using these angles in particular and we're going to put them together. Now if they're too small, it becomes really fiddly and annoying. So I'll just show you the triangle once again. So we have our triangle here. And what we've done is we've got the three interior angles and we're going to use these to show you just how they all add up to 180 degrees. So we'll grab them. And what I imagine is that these are kind of like bird beaks. That is, you can see the little bird beak here, here and here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to, I guess for lack of a better word, make the bird beaks kiss. So we're gonna put them all together. And when we do that, you can see that these all, when we add them together, make 180 degrees. Now, of course, in order to really understand this, students do need to know that there are 360 degrees in a circle. So you wouldn't teach this before they really understand that first. So we can now see that the interior angles of a triangle all add up to 180 degrees. But my question for you is what happens if we do exactly the same thing, but with a quadrilateral? Will we get the same kind of shape or will there be more? Now, obviously you guys being teachers will know that we'll get 360 degrees, but what a great opportunity for students to then start exploring other shapes and other polygons with more sides. In fact, this is where you can go with it. So when dealing with shapes or polygons that have more than four sides, we're going to start coming across angles or interior angles that add to more than 360 degrees. So when thinking about what we did with the triangle, it's going to become a little bit challenging because some of those angles are going to start overlapping and it will be hard to keep track of. But here is how we can manage this. I'm going to use the quadrilateral and also a five-sided shape to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Any polygon can be broken up into smaller triangles. You can see how I've done that here by using these dotted lines. So as you can see here, I've got my quadrilateral, I've got two triangles that I can make. And we can use this knowledge to help us determine the interior angles of these shapes. For example, you can see that I've got one triangle here, so this angle plus this angle plus this angle will all add to 180 degrees. Also for this triangle, I've got this angle plus this angle plus this angle will also add to 180 degrees. So when I add all four of these angles together, I will get 360 degrees. So we can use these smaller triangles to help us determine the interior angle sum. 
Let's have a look at how this applies when working with a five-sided shape. In order to determine the size of the triangles, we start off in one corner and we just draw a dotted line going out to the other corners. Then we can use the triangles to figure out what the internal angles will add to. So if I go like this, I'll have one, two, and three, that's 180 degrees. I'll have one, two, and three, that's also 180 degrees. And I'll have one, two, and three, that's also 180 degrees. So three lots of 180 degrees becomes 540. That is if I have this angle, plus this angle, plus this angle, plus this angle, plus this angle, it will give us 540 degrees. Now we can use this information and actually put it into a table because this will help us to see some patterns. So for a three-sided shape, I know that I can make one triangle because a three-sided shape is a triangle. And of course, that's going to have an interior angle sum of 180 degrees. For a four-sided shape, like you can see here, well, that's going to give me two triangles or I can make two triangles out of that. And that's going to give me an interior angle sum of 360 degrees. Whereas for a five-sided shape, I'm going to have three lots of 180, so that is going to be three triangles, and that will give me 540 degrees. Now what's the purpose of using this table here, you might ask? Well, it's to help us see the different patterns that come out. For example, if you have a look at these first two rows here, we can see that the number of triangles always seems to be two less than the number of sides. So I can actually write that as a formula. That is the number of triangles is equal to the number of sides minus two. And that can actually help us figure out the internal angle sum when dealing with any side polygon. Because if we think about that, for each number of triangles, we simply multiply by 180 degrees. So therefore, if I wanna find the interior angle sum, that is A, I just simply go the number of triangles times 180. Or I can do the number of triangles, well that's equal to the number of sides minus two. So I can go the number of sides minus two times 180. And to make that look a little bit nicer, I can simply write 180 multiplied by S minus two, and that will give us our interior angle sum. So we can then use this to figure out what the interior angle sum will be for any size polygon. That is any side or any shape with any number of sides. So as you can see, we started with a simple two minute activity that has now grown into something that can be extended so much further. That is, we started off by getting students to simply cut out the interior angles of a triangle and add them together to show that they equaled 180 degrees. From there, we grew it to find the interior angle sum of any size polygon, that is any shape with any number of sides. Now the key when doing any of this is to get students to look for patterns. So as a teacher, it's really important that you ask them, is there anything that we notice that's similar between what we're doing? So when working with students who are doing the triangles, ask them, is there anything that we're noticing? And hopefully they'll recognize that all of the interior angles add to 180 degrees. When doing this kind of thing and you're showing them the triangles, maybe they can then use the table to then figure out the different patterns that you can see. And then you can take it even further by looking at the algebraic patterns that actually can occur within them too, or that help to explain what's actually going on. And as you can see, it's the openness of this activity that really makes it a fantastic activity that you can use with your students and give everyone the opportunity to experience success. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and also share it with other teachers so that they can use it within their classroom too. My name's Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.